Today, we're going to be talking about some of the basic concepts in the field of nutrition. This is such a vast area and way too many topics to cover in a brief presentation, but hopefully you can take one or two key concepts with you after today's presentation and apply them in your everyday life. Our objectives are to identify some of the things that influence what we eat, why we eat, and how much we eat. We're also going to look at lifestyle factors that could be risks for disease, and nutrition is certainly one of them. We'll briefly look at the six classes of nutrients and identify why they're important for our health. And we're going to look at my plate, which is a visual to give us a representation of what our real plate should look like with regard to the type of food and how much. The keys to nutrition are balance, variety, and moderation. Those three keys are something that sometimes it's easy to describe but very hard to implement. So hopefully after discussing it, you'll be able to implement it into your daily routine. As in any industry, there are always some controversial issues and nutrition is no exception. So we'll look at one or two controversial issues in the area of nutrition. Let's look at some key definitions. It's really important. Take diet, for instance. People think diet and right away they think of a type of diet like the Atkins diet or Weight Watchers. And she started South Beach yesterday and oh, he's on the Nutrisystem plan. But in reality, diet is actually the food that you eat at every meal. It's the food choices we make every day. Nutrients are substances that are found in foods that keep us healthy and sustain life. We must get them through our diet. So choose wisely because as the old saying goes, you are what you eat. Garbage in equals garbage out. So make sure those nutrients going in are good. You want nutrients that are dense so that they are not simple. For example, white bread is a simple carbohydrate that has very few nutrients. Whole grain bread is a complex carbohydrate that's very nutrient dense. So you want nutrient density, not energy density. When we talk about energy in the world of nutrition, energy is synonymous with calories. So if a food is energy dense, it's high in calories. If a food is nutrient dense, it's high in nutrients. So choose foods that are high in nutrients and low in calories. Nutrition is a science. It studies all of the nutrients in foods, how the body processes food, and how we use that to sustain life. Metabolism, that's another word that gets thrown around a lot, similar to diet. Oh, he has such a fast metabolism. He can eat anything he wants. Poor girl, her metabolism is so slow. No matter how much she diets and exercises, she can never lose weight. In reality, when we look at metabolism, we're looking at the taking in, the digestion, and the absorption of nutrients, and then transferring those nutrients into fuel that the body uses for all bodily functions to sustain life, and to give us energy. So what influences our eating habits? There are so many things when we think about what goes into our choices that we make. A lot of it has to do with family and our childhood experiences and even our ethnic background. We grow up in a house where we learn certain things from a very, very early age and nutrition is no exception. We learn by the age of three years old how to develop good or bad eating habits. So what happens during family time in our early years really lays the groundwork for what we're going to do when we make choices for eating later on as an adult. Think about family and holidays and what, what does your family do based on its ethnicity? What about your peers? Is there any effect when you're out with your peers? Do you eat differently? Do you eat more? You know, what, what happens when you're out at a restaurant as opposed to eating at home? There's so many things in the environment that affect the choices we make when it comes to food. With regard to even things such as our education and our occupation, the more education we have and the higher our income, we usually tend to make better choices. A, because we have the knowledge, and B, we have the financial means to afford better quality food. 
sometimes it just comes down to the basic basic things such as the flavor of food and the appearance of food. We eat because we like to eat. We enjoy it. We like the way something tastes. Do we eat for reasons other than hunger? Are we eating for emotional reasons? Or is it something that maybe, oh, I'm you know in a bad mood today, so I'm going to eat some kind of food that will comfort me? Or I'm in such a great mood, I'm going to celebrate and eat and drink and be merry. So there are a lot of things that affect what goes into creating our overall habits and nutrition. And the environment that we live in, the people that we're involved with, and our own mental and emotional relationship with food determines what those choices are going to be. And if that isn't enough, then there's the advertising and media world where There's so much hype about nutrition and diets and what's good and this supplement and that supplement, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we believe? You know, it's it's hard to determine. So we have to be educated consumers and kind of fish through all that information and figure out what's valid and reliable. Poor diet is such a risk for disease, for many types of diseases. And these kind of foods that we typically see in the American diet, such as hamburgers and fried chicken and hot dogs and pizza and french fries, etc., although they taste delicious, they really wreak havoc with our body. So a poor diet can definitely set up for different types of diseases. When we have a poor diet, we make bad lifestyle choices. The diet that's high in fat, a lifestyle that's very low in activity, These choices that we make become risk factors for us to to develop a disease called obesity. Years ago, obesity was not considered a disease, and today it is because 69% of the population is overweight or obese. It's a huge risk factor for developing diseases such as heart disease, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, ultimately leading to an early death. So what do we do? We have to start taking control of our lifestyle choices. One of them is making dietary changes. We need to increase our grains, fruits and vegetables, beans, lean protein in our diet, low fat dairy. So for instance, let's look at grains. If you were brought up in the 60s or 70s, Wonder Bread was the bread of choice. Everybody wanted Wonder Bread. Way back when, market people that were doing marketing felt that if they could bleach bread and make it really soft, people would want to buy more of it. And hence, Wonder Bread was born. But in reality, when you bleach the grains and make them softer, you're taking out all of the essential nutrients and the fiber, and you're left pretty much with empty calories. Do a quick test with your bread. If you can grab a piece of bread and and crumble it up into a ball, if it gets really squished down into a small ball and is very gummy and sticks together, throw it away. It's basically white bread with empty calories. If your bread is harder to squeeze into a ball and is more dense, it's probably a whole grain and is much healthier. So choose whole grains and not just with bread. Choose barley and oats and rye and millet and quinoa. Vary up your grains, but make sure that they're whole. Sprouted wheat is one of the best types of wheat you can have and is full of its nutrients and is very, very minimally processed. With regard to fruits and vegetables, start upping up the, the amount of servings you have a day. You know, there are so many different types of fruits and so many different types of vegetables. The more colorful your plate, the more of these essential nutrients you're going to get. Vary your vegetables with regard to leafy greens versus broccoli and cruciferous type vegetables. Change up the colors. Have yellow, orange, green, purple, red. And with fruit, have a variety of fruit, but eat the skin. You know, the skin for fruits and vegetables has most of the fiber as well as the vitamins and minerals. You're better off eating a whole fruit as opposed to drinking juice because juice is too simplified. And what ends up happening is once you drink the juice, you're not getting much of the fiber. Most of it was removed. The fiber is in the fruit itself and helps keep you satisfied longer. 
With regard to beans, make sure you're including beans. They're a very, very, very great source of, of protein and also carbohydrates and fiber. And they're very healthy as part of your overall diet. Now we know what we have to increase. What should we decrease? Very simply, you want to avoid sugar, reduce your fat intake and switch to healthier fats, avoid processed food and really, really watch your portions. So for instance, with fat, there are so many different fats out there and some of the fats are good and some of them aren't as healthy. So what we want to look at is try to change the type of fat we're eating. So instead of having very saturated fats such as butter or hydrogenated oils, these are things you should be looking at in your food labels. You want to remove that from your diet. Take a food such as peanut butter. You can go down the aisle and grab a couple of peanut butter jars. One of them is natural and one is a typical brand. The typical brand will have peanuts, salt, sugar, in the form of either sugar or corn syrup, and it has corn starch or some type of a sugar and some hydrogenated oils. Then you look at the natural brand and the only ingredients are peanuts and salt. Choose that one. The less ingredients and the ones that are easy to pronounce and you understand, then you know that the food is as whole as possible and minimally processed. Avoid sugar. Sugar is the enemy. Sugar causes inflammation, and studies have proven that inflammation is the precursor to many diseases such as cancer and heart disease. So you want to start removing sugar from your diet, and you have to do it gradually because it's something that we all ended up uh, being exposed to, and sugar is addicting. So if you want to remove it, it's hard to do it all at once. Do it gradually. It usually takes about 10 to 14 days to change a habit with regard to nutrition. And you'll see, I challenge all of you, start removing sugar from your diet and in 10 to 14 days, see how you feel about sugar. If you tried to drink a can of Coke after 14 days of having no sugar, you'll probably drink it and say, "Ugh, how did I ever drink this stuff? So try it, make some small changes. The key is make your dietary changes small to start with so that you can be successful and have positive results. Reduce your portion sizes. You want to keep those sizes small so that you're eating less but you're eating more throughout the day. With regard to the different classes of nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, minerals, and water are our major classes. Carbohydrates get a bad rap. So many times you hear diets, don't eat this type of carbohydrate or you should have no carbs in your diet. Well, if you did that, it really would be a disservice to your brain because the only source of nutrient that your brain absorbs is carbohydrates. So if you're not eating carbohydrates in your diet and you're wondering why you feel sluggish, no energy, can't concentrate, your focus is off, it's because your brain is not getting the nourishment it needs. The key with carbohydrates is to know the difference between simple and complex. Simple carbohydrates are basically your white food, your white bread, white rice, things of that nature, sugar, things that break down very quickly and really are full of calories, not nutrients. Complex carbohydrates are fruits and vegetables and beans and whole grains that are filled with fiber and nutrients and break down slowly and keep you satisfied for a much longer period. With regard to lipids, there are healthy fats and there are not so healthy fats. We want to start reducing the not so healthy fats and replacing them with good fats such as olive oil, coconut oil. Coconut oil is high in calories and so is olive oil, but if you use it in moderation, there are a lot of health benefits to both fats. Coconut oil helps to reduce inflammation and burn fat. So other healthy fats include Omega-3s that we find in salmon and walnuts, and avocados are also a healthy fat. But again, remember, they are calorie dense, so you want to eat them in moderation. Protein is very important. Whether you have animal sources of protein or plant sources, you need to have protein in the diet. You want to balance your diet so you're having somewhere between 55 and 65 percent of your calories from carbohydrates, maybe 15 to 20 from protein and the rest from healthy fats. With protein, choose lean protein. 
You want very, very uh, little fat in your meat, such as steak. Choose a variety like filet mignon, or if you're getting ground beef, make sure it's at least 93% lean. And with your chicken, white meat is better and no skin. And just keep it, you know, as, as pure as possible. And same with your fish. You can add fish to your diet or other type of non-animal proteins. You can get proteins from vegetables. You can have soy protein. There are many different varieties that you can do to make sure that you're ensuring the proper amount of protein in the diet. Vitamins and minerals, really don't have to worry much about them. If you're eating from all the different nutrient classes and having variety in all the different food groups, you'll be getting all of your vitamins and minerals. Water, on the other hand, is essential to survival. We have about 75% of our body consisting of water. So we need to replace water daily. We lose water through sweat, through bodily functions, and also through respiration. Just when we're breathing, we lose water. Sometimes we're sick, we lose water that way. So water is constantly being uh, depleted from the body and must be replenished. Shoot for about 64 ounces a day, and that can change if you're overly active. My plate is a wonderful visual or graphic for you to understand what your plate should actually look at. ChooseMyPlate.gov is a great website, which we're going to look at in, the, in a few minutes, to understand what goes into designing your meals every day. What percentage of the plate should be fret vegetables or fruit or grains, protein, dairy, etc.? So this is an easy visual for all to understand, even children. Prior to my plate, my pyramid was the go-to for understanding food groups and what we should be eating. And it is very valid and reliable. However, some feel it is a little bit too complex, specifically for children to understand. So now I want to shift briefly to bringing you to my plate, the actual choosemyplate.gov website so you can see what the wonderful tools they have available. I draw your attention to choosemyplate.gov. This is a website put out by the United States Department of Agriculture and it looks at things such as the dietary guidelines and what's important for Americans with regard to choosing the right foods. And my plate talks about different types of food groups that you should be incorporating, such as fruits and vegetables and grains, etc., and how much. It reaches children as well as adults and talks about the types of food you should eat for a good, healthy eating style, what kinds of beverages you should include, making changes and starting out small and then growing as you start becoming successful. It looks at physical activity what it is, why it's important, what we should do, how to increase it. it, has great online tools, quizzes that you can test your knowledge with. There is information on portion control and distorted portion sizes and why we think things are, you know, smaller than they really are. We always think we eat less than what we really do take in during the day. So it helps you to understand that by talking about portion sizes. It also has a tracker so you can track things. There are so many videos and print materials and how to plan menus and different recipes and guidelines that you should follow, even sections on, on food safety. So I strongly encourage you to look at this. There's a lot of information here and it does take a lot of time to navigate, but it's so worth your time and effort to help you in planning your meals and increasing your nutrition to become a very healthy lifestyle. So that was a little bit on my plate and I hope that you know you do get a chance to look at this website and to look at this visual from time to time so you can understand what your plate should really look like. Does your plate look like this? Do you have the right amounts of fruits and vegetables and grains and protein and dairy throughout your day? These are questions you want to look at when examining your own nutrition. So let's look at those keys to nutrition I referred to earlier. Balance, variety, and moderation. Very, very important. If you take anything away from this, understand this concept. With balance, you need to be eating from every one of these food groups. This 
My Pyramid graphic is an older graphic used before my plate, but still very effective. Each triangle is color coded to the food group and the amount that you should be eating. It even includes exercise with the figure running up the steps. So each one of those food groups should be part of your day because if you're not including all of those food groups, you may not be getting the essential nutrients. You can't get them all from one food group. You have to eat all of the food groups to get all the nutrients we need for survival. But within balance, there is variety. We have to balance those food groups, but every food group has a variety within it. So you want to eat a bunch of different types of foods within the group. For example, fruits. You don't want to just eat bananas. You want to branch out to bananas and apples and pears and grapes and strawberries and all kinds of berries. And the same goes for all of the other food groups so that you're getting enough variety to get all of the nutrients you need. The hardest one to understand and to, and to apply is moderation. It's hard to eat in moderation. You need to really start examining your own relationship with food and understand why you're eating. If you're eating for physical benefit, then you eat just until you feel satisfied. A lot of times if you're eating for pleasure, you're going to overeat and you're going to eat until you're overstuffed and that's not good. So you need to start looking at your portion sizes and reducing them considerably. Reduce portion sizes and increase your physical activity and you'll be able to lose and maintain weight easily. With regard to moderation, think of your stomach as the size of your fist because that's pretty much what it is. And if you were to look at your plate and take all of your food and bunch it up into a ball, if it's larger than the size of your fist, you're eating too much. You're stretching your stomach out and every time that you eat, your stomach is stretched and is going to look for more and more food to satisfy and feel full. So keep your portions the size of your fist and try to eat until you're about 75% full and you're on your way to practicing balance, variety, and moderation. Some concepts just quickly to review is to realize that all of the food that we eat contains all of the essential nutrients for survival, but we cannot get it from one food, so we have to make sure that we have balance and variety. Don't get into the trap of thinking of foods as good or bad, because if you label foods in this manner, you may end up depriving yourself, and then you defeat the purpose and end up failing. So if you say a food is good or this food is bad, you won't eat the bad food and then you'll end up feeling deprived. So the best thing to do is understand nutrition comes in all different shapes and sizes. One size does not fit all. We're all different with individual needs. But if we can eat most of the time in a healthy manner and then let ourselves have our indulgences every now and then, even if they're not quite as healthy, it's not going to sabotage our goals. So understand that nutrition is a dynamic science. It's changing all the time and we have to keep up with all of the information to understand what is the best thing to use in our lives to make our nutrition the best it can possibly be. I promised you a controversy. Well, dietary supplements is a huge one. Are they helpful? Are they harmful? What to believe? They're not regulated the way food and drugs are in this country. But fortunately, we do have the Dietary Supplement and Health Education Act, which can help with trying to find out some information about dietary supplements. There is so much out there, and there's so many varieties of supplements. The best thing to do is really determine, do you really need them? The best way to do that is visit a physician or a nutrition specialist who can analyze your diet and know if you have any kind of deficiencies. Simple blood tests can tell if you have dietary deficiencies with regard to vitamins and minerals. And if you do, and then in that case, of course you need to supplement, and that's under the supervision of an expert. But to take supplements on your own sometimes can be very tricky. You don't know how much, you don't know if they're being absorbed properly because there's different interactions with certain types of vitamins and minerals and also medications that you take. So be very careful and specifically if you do choose to supplement, be, be wary of anything that is produced outside of the United States. In the United States, we don't have very rigid uh, laws with regard to supplements, but we do have very rigid labeling laws. So everything has to be on that label. Other countries do not have the same 
stringent laws with regard to labeling, and they may not put disclose all of their ingredients. For example, ephedra has been banned in the United States. Some people can get diet type uh, supplements from China, let's say, and there might be ephedra in there, but it's not on their label. So be very, very careful. The point is, it is controversial as to whether or not they help you, or whether or not they could hurt you. And you have to be an educated consumer, research, talk to experts before making any decisions. So that is our basic nutrition topic. And I hope that you were able to get something out of this presentation. There are so many different things that we can talk about, and we will cover many other topics in other presentations. Our goal is to always teach, empower, and motivate you to live your best life.